Today we're going to talk about initial objects. Initial objects are just the dual of terminal objects. There, that's all you need to know, because now you understand everything about initial objects, right? Okay, I'll explain what that actually means. Of course, dual means that if you turn around all the morphisms in the definition, so if they went from there to there, we're going to make them go from there to there now, then you get the dual notion. Um, so what does that mean in this case? Well, remember that a terminal object was an object such that given any other object in the category, there was a unique morphism to this object. So an initial object is going to be an object such that given any other object in the category, there's a unique morphism from the object. So we just turn the arrow around. So let's write down the definition. Um, initial object in the category C is an object I such that, well, what's the universal property? The bit that comes next is the universal property such that for all objects X in the category that exists a unique morphism from our initial one to our other one. So it's the kind of starting point because it's initial, right? Um, so notice that if we turn around every arrow in this definition to face the other way, there's only one arrow, so we turn this one around and it would become exactly the definition of terminal object, uh, <clears throat> which means that an initial object in C is precisely a terminal object in C op. Right. Let's immediately have some examples. Before we had the category of sets, we can look at the category of sets again, and this time it's going to be the empty set. Because given any empty given any other set, there's a unique function from the empty set to this one. Because there's nothing to do, right? There's only one thing you can do because there isn't anything to do. Um, it's that curious empty function. In set, the empty set is initial. In uh, the category of topological spaces, it's the same thing. The empty space. Is initial. In the category of groups, something a bit different happens because of course you can't have an empty group. The group must at the very least have the identity in it. So the identity, the group with just the identity in it, that's the trivial group, is really the smallest group you can have. Now that certainly is initial because given any other group there is a unique morphism, homomorphism from the trivial group to this one. Why? Well, you've got to send this element somewhere but it's the identity so it has to go to the identity over there. There's no choice in the matter. That's the absolutely only thing you can do. So in group, the trivial group is initial. And remember, the trivial group was also terminal. So in fact, in groups, the trivial group is initial and terminal. This is not always the case, right? In set, it was a one element set that was terminal and it's the zero element set this is initial. And so in set and top, they're different, whereas in groups, they happen to be the same. And this is actually a very useful property about groups. Um, and so it sometimes is given the name null object, which means it's terminal and initial. There are other categories with objects that are terminal and initial. For example, if you think about the category of pointed sets, a, point, a pointed set is a set with a chosen element, the point, and the morphisms between them have to take the chosen element to the chosen element, so they're sort of base point preserving. Um, and also you can think about base spaces, which are likewise, a base space is a topological space with a chosen point, called the base point, and the maps between them are then continuous maps that take the base point to the base point. Right. So now, in both of these cases, the smallest one, the smallest object you could possibly have isn't empty anymore because it has to have a base point. So the smallest object you can have is the one with just the base point and nothing else. In which case it's initial, just in the same way that the, the trivial group was initial. Because if you've got 
a space, base space with a base point and nothing else. If you try and map it to another space, there's only one thing you can possibly do, right? Because the base point here has to go to the base point there, so you have no choice in the matter whatsoever. So, the, the set or the space containing just the base point is initial and indeed also terminal. So that's quite interesting. Um, another example that I didn't talk about last time is the example of categories themselves. We have terminal category and initial category. Um, another example is in cat, we have uh, the empty category. is initial for just a very similar argument to the one that says that the empty set is initial. And for the terminal category, we have any one element category, a category with one element, precisely, one element object, and one morphism. Of course, if there's only one morphism, it has to be the identity, right? The identity is terminal. Because if you think about a functor from any other category to this one, there's no choice about where you send the objects because they've all got to go to the one object here. And then there's no choice about where to send any morphisms either because they've all got to go to the, the single morphism that's here. Um, so that's what happens in cat. And it's also worth noting that in the category of fields, we have no terminal object and we also have no initial object. This whole thing is a problem about different characteristics, incidentally. Uh, right. So it's worth also saying while we're here that anything that anything that's true about terminal objects is going to be also true about initial objects in the dual form. Because an initial object in here is just a terminal object in the dual category, anything we can deduce about terminal objects, we can just then dualize and deduce about initial objects. So for example, initial objects, just like terminal objects, are unique up to unique isomorphism. Unique up to unique isomorphism. And the proof is exactly the same as the one for terminal object, and it's the dual. Finally, a bit of notation. Terminal objects are often written often written as one and initial objects as zero. Can't spell initial objects as zero. Um, and for future reference, note that terminal objects are a kind of limit and initial objects are a kind of co-limit. So we'll see what that means later.